It's on. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, I would like to announce um, announcement of audio video recording of this meeting. And also we have um, North Street Association who has requested that Ruth McGrath come in and video for, for them also. Um, I'd like to do the approval of the minutes of May 19th. Um, move to approve. who is the director of the North Denver Recreation Department. And I see she also has a guest with her. And we'd like you to announce who your guest is with you, please. Yep, this is Shelby Mitchell. She's our assistant uh, recreation director at the office. Thank you for being here, both of you. Mm -hmm. OK, Anne Marie, I'm leaving it all up to you. OK, so here's handouts of the slides that we are going to Great. present. And okay. please, do you have an extra one? Yep, I have a few extra. I'll give it to um, Pam Powers. Okay. <coughs> Feel free to jump in with any questions or anything. Um, basically, it's an overview of what our department does and how we operate within the realm of the, of the city and how we work with other departments and, um, and groups throughout the city. So, um, first we have our mission, which is to promote the well-being of the individual in our community by providing a, a wide range of recreational opportunities to meet all ages of the citizens of Northampton and our surrounding areas. So we work with not only residents of Northampton, Florence, and Leeds, we also, um, people in surrounding towns have the opportunity to also partake in our programs. So our full-time staff, we have seven full-time staff in our department. Um, so Shelby, who is here, Eileen Wright um, is our department secretary, Lori Culver does our pool, Erin Carroll and Kathy Weston are our recreation supervisors. They run all of our sports programs, summer camps, and um, special events. They're the direct supervisors of, of those programs and staff. <coughs> Chris Kostek is our de um, department clerk and secretary in the office, and then myself. So there's seven of us that work full-time um, for the department. We also have a recreation commission. They oversee the operations of the department. There is nine of them. They um, meet monthly, usually the first Monday of every month. Um, it varies though sometimes. And they oversee our budget, the programs that we do. Uh, they set, help set policy and they are, are field and facility usage and much more. So they volunteer for um, you know, once a month meetings, which turns into a lot more with some of the various committees and things that um, they volunteer to, to work on, as you guys do also. Um, the current board is listed there. Tom Parent, Carol Bertrand, Mike Laga, Jim Durfer, Dan Smith, Glenn Conley, Tom Dumphy, Joan Finn, and David Cronin. There's lots of years of... Um, of commitment from a lot of those people. Some have been on for over 20 years, have been, have been working with the city and giving their time to, to the department, which is really nice. Um, our budget is pretty tiny compared to the overall city budget. Um, we get a certain amount from the city and then through our revolving fund, we um, operate through all those fees that people, that our programs, our program participants pay. Um, and so the overall city budget, we, we get over 200000 initially from the city in the, at the beginning of the year. And then at the end of the year, we actually um, return some of the money um, in fees and charges so that our actual budget is, um, comes down to around 175000 is what we cost the city for everything we do, which is a really minute part of, of the whole entire budget. 69% um, of our operations are funded through the fees and 31% is funded through the general fund after all is said and done. Yeah. 
Shelby, would right. you like to talk about so, where we operate? Yeah, so we're <laughs> going to talk about where we operate. Um, our office, our rec department office, is located on the ground that's been vocational at high school. Um, and that's the only building that we primarily operate out of, but we use all kinds of different community spaces. So we, our programs um, and the pool are mostly for indoor spaces in the um, elementary um, and JFK middle school. Um, and then we also utilize other spaces um, for, um, for um, different programs. Um, we are often creative. We sometimes have programs at the Civic Center or um, different other community spaces in the city that we use to run um, some of our things. Um, so, and we coordinate um, a lot of the usage at JFK Middle School, um, the gym and the pool and some of the other things there on the weekends. We have an agreement with um, the school committee for that. Um, and then we also coordinate and schedule the usage of all city outdoor owned space. So all this school um, and other facilities we coordinate for the spring and summer when we have lots and lots of kids playing baseball and softball and all that kind of stuff out there. Um, being, being tricky again. Let's take it out of this one. Let's see. It's going in and out on us, so let's try it. Let's try that and see what happens. I hope we fix it before we get to the pretty pictures mm -hmm. with all the kids. <laughs> Okay. And then lastly, we have a cooperative agreement with Lift Park where we run a lot of our camps and special events and new sport programs and things there. It's been a long-standing cooperative agreement. It's a great um, collaborative agreement that we have with them. Um, so we also coordinate a lot with the DPW. Um, we don't supervise any of them. A lot of um, different models for parks and recreation um, departments in the Pioneer Valley, but we are just the recreation department, but we coordinate a lot with um, the parks and cemeteries division because our existence kind of depends on each other. So they're responsible for the maintenance and the upkeep of all the facilities that we use, but we do a lot of the programming for that. So we work um, very closely on them. Um, and we just wanted to say that the Parks and Cemetery Division maintains 135 acres of playing field structures, and acres of water grounds, five acres of street parks. Um, our beach, the skate park, they do a lot of stuff, plus all the cemeteries. So, um, and as you guys well are, are well aware, there's a lot of people using our facilities, our fields, constantly. So they require a lot of upkeep and, and, and use. So um, it's great that we have that good coordination with them. And, Future. Any questions on any of that? Yeah. We also um, work with the Office of Planning and Sustainability, along with the DPW, to do a lot of um, our grant management and applications with Wayne Fight and his office. So we team up with them. Some of the recent grants we've gotten is the Park Parklands Acquisition and Renovations for Communities. So the park grants that we have been very lucky as a community to get pretty much every year for the past few years, and those. The park grant has helped um, acquire a, a part of the Florence Recreation Fields. It's helped, um, it, it was part of, um, it, we're applying for it for Pulaski Park for the renovations coming up. Um, it was part of the boathouse at one point. So it's every year um, we've been really lucky because our community qualifies so highly for the, the grant that we've been able to get that from the state each year. We, get, we have CPA funds which the law changed for CPA, um, which was wonderful um, a couple, within the past two years. It changed so that not only can CPA, it used to be CPA was only able to use to get new parks or play, playgrounds, so we really couldn't um, tap into the funds, and now CPA can be used for existing parks and playgrounds um, to do um, renovations. It's not for regular maintenance type things, but it is for renovations and things, so the CPA grant has been used recently for a great deal of <coughs> projects that we're involved in. And then we also have received the Common Backyard Playground Grant, which is going to be utilized to put in um, a play, some kind of playgrounds at Lampern Park, which is in front of Bridge Street School, as well as start out the playground at the Florence Rec Fields um, up there. So that's all going to be kicking off um, very soon and be built hopefully August and September. Oh, those will start going in. So our current projects, there's a picture of the Florence Rec Fields there. The little one on the left is when we started out with the, all the bulldozers and everything ready to go. And on the right is, um, you can't see it that well, but all the soccer goals are up. 
and things, and it looks really nice. The grass, we, we, we're not in acceptance yet, but we're very close to accepting it from the contractor. Um, the city would then take over um, maintenance of, the DPW would take over the maintenance of the fields, and then the plan is to open them next spring, in spring of 2015, because they really have to sit. A lot of them were seeded, a lot of the area was just seeded this spring, last fall and this spring. It really takes a good year for it to take hold, so. Um, that project is going on now. We also have the playground to put in there still and a bathroom slash concession building. We still have to go out to bid for and we're almost done with that design. Then we have to find more money. And then um, we'll, we'll hopefully get that built um, this fall or early spring next year because that's a really, it's a really neat building. And that would help house some of the DPW equipment there that they're hopefully going to be getting. A um, couple of the other projects going on is I mentioned the playgrounds. Um, the boat house on Damon Road, we've, um, the Office of Planning has really been leading that and taking the reins, but um, we're involved with it somewhat also. And that's uh, some pictures from just last week. Down there, there's a ramp built that's it's not finished yet, but it's going in down to the water, and it's just an absolutely beautiful area that we're working with Northampton Community Rowing and that group with to um, eventually have some of their programming out of there, and they would help to maintain and take care of the area and be and be a presence there also. So it's just, it's really nice down there. Mm -hmm. The river is a, is a, is a beautiful area. Um, Plasky Park renovations, the DPW, Jim Lorilla is actually leading that. And I know you guys have been at some of the um, meetings at um, the Senior Center. So there's one more meeting coming up uh, next week um, for that to kind of start finalizing those plans and start ready, going for the grants and planning for that. And then we're putting in a baseball field at Veterans Field that's been in line for years now, and we're finally um, just about, the, the bid is just about done, and that should be going out to bid very soon. Right. Outdoor places. <clears throat> so we wanted to just list out for you guys all the different um, facilities that we do have yeah, um, in Northampton, and each one and what, and what they do have to offer. So Mains Field, um, we have one lit softball field, um, where any night you'll find um, Mostly men playing softball down there, but sometimes co-ed too. Um, a pavilion that uh, we rent out quite frequently to different groups and um, for graduation parties or different groups that have parties down there. Um, volleyball courts um, and horseshoe pit. Arcanum Field. Um, there's two baseball fields there. Um, playground, swings, uh, basketball courts, and of course AT Village. <laughs> um, which you're getting gearing up for to start in a couple weeks here. Um, Ray Ellerbrook Field. Um, for um, Burt's Pit Road in Florence, uh, they have a multi-purpose playing field there and a softball field. Um, Sheldon Field, there's three softball fields, a baseball field, basketball courts, a park and ride lot um, down there. And Veterans Field is a skate park. Um, Amber was just talking about the baseball field that we're going to be putting back in there. Um, basketball courts and a small um, playground down there. And then the Florence Recreation Field, it's very exciting. The five multi-purpose fields and two baseball fields and a playground and concessions and for, for there. Um, and then we also um, schedule um, the school fields, which I kind of touch base on that we coordinate with the TPW. So we also utilize all the school fields too. Um, and Northampton High, the two um, baseball fields there, and then field hockey, um, all the fields out, out behind JFK Middle School and the facilities there. We have lots of tennis programs going on those courts um, after the high school season is over. And then we use the outfield there for Soccer, lacrosse field, hockey, ultimate frisbee. Um, Leeds is used as a soccer field. Rhine Road, there's four baseball fields. Well, five baseball fields. One's a little bit larger than the other. And then in the fall, we use it for football, ultimate frisbee, and soccer. And um, Jackson Street, um, there's a 60-foot softball field there. Um, and soccer and lacrosse play in the outfield. And then Bridge Street. Elementary schools, Amory was talking a little bit about the Common Backyards grant and the playground that will be going in there soon. So these, these, that's a list of places we program at per se. There's still a lot of little parks and things that aren't listed on there that the DPW takes care of. That um, um, the one what's it Agnes Fox. Ag like Agnes Fox. You know, we don't do the programs there, but that's a park. So there's a few parks that we don't program at that the DPW takes care of, and we didn't include those on there, but there's how, variety. How about Ryan Road? Do you take care of that? Um, we program there. We just program the fields. But the, D, the DPW takes care of them when there has, has to be, like, lined for a baseball game, or um, mow, they do the mowing of the big fields and things like that. And we put our programs there. The Board of Public Works 
Yeah. She goes for mowing. Well, yes, yeah. they do the mowing at most of the schools, I believe, on the big on the big areas with the big mowers, and then the school department has their own maintenance crew that does um, maintenance of the smaller areas. Because I know there was some concerns in regards to having McGrath, she's a cross guard at Ryan Road, and maybe we can speak about it, Ruth, of your sure. concerns. I've been taking pictures and videoing the field line there in the morning. Yep. They come every Tuesday, every Wednesday, and every Thursday, rain or shine. Mow the field three days in a row, the entire field takes at least 40 VW guys full time. The chalk lines are fine. They break out the chalk line, put in new chalk lines. The next morning they redo what they did the day before, yep. even though they look like brand new. Pouring rain or not, it could be yep. pouring rain, rain all day. I've watched guys out there with a push lawn mower mowing the field and holding it with the wheels on the front up in the air, just pushing it along, giving it a good time. Yeah. I've watched guys on the riding mower doing wheelies in the field. Yeah. I've watched them roll it down the hill. He jumped, luckily, in time he didn't get hurt. Yeah. But, I mean, all this yeah, is going on three days a week without fail, like clockwork. Two weeks ago, I went on the city's website and put it out on that part where you can make suggestions. And I noticed they changed the time they do it. They don't do it while I'm standing there anymore. Right. But I live right there, so I still yeah. see them. They just don't realize that. Yeah, that's the DPW's um, Parks and Cemetery Division who do most of it. I don't know if the school division does some of it, but that would be something to, you know, get in touch with the DPW and the um, the school department division, which is part of Central Services. Um, they work under them at Central Services for all the school like custodians and maintenance people and things. So they, they're the ones who do, who do that. Yeah. I mean, I've seen them out there with rakes trying to rake the water out of the baseball diamond. Yeah, well, I know they do have to try to get, with the baseball diamond themselves, they do have to try to get the water out of there if they can, if they're supposed to be games that night. It's so poor so, rain, and they, it's going to yeah. rain all day and all yeah. night, and they're out there trying to get yeah. the water off and yeah. put chalk lines out and they wash away as fast as they do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tricky, it's a tricky thing. Yep. Are you, are you planning on doing programming at, at Lampard? So is that for at Lampard, or for, is that the bridge, the actual bridge street? That's the um, front area, and we're not actually. No, it was kind of on there as like, okay, the playground's getting Good. put in, and yeah. there's the the school does, so it probably shouldn't be on there for programs. We won't have like soccer come there or anything like that. Okay. But it was kind of like, oh, yeah, playgrounds coming like in there. So right. as part one of the schools, yeah, all the different schools have little things. So I'm like, oh, bridge street has a playground coming that you know to kind of. Right. We sort of separate it out in our um, in our brochure what things have, you know, what amenities and and things. So that will just be, yeah. We, there will not be programming. Like, yeah. Uh, just what the school does during the day. Right. They have gym PE out there and stuff. Right. And I do know yeah. for a fact with baseball fields, they need a tremendous amount of care. Oh, yeah. There's no question about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's one of the hardest things this, this spring and, and being the summer that we do. I, I've got calls all weekend because people, you know, it rained Friday night, they want their games to be played Saturday morning, but there's literally some Saturdays and Sundays they have 15 fields to do. Yeah. And so it's like, all right, so where do they start? Who do they pump the water off first? Where do they go? And some fields they just say aren't playable. Some fields they work really hard to get the water off. So it's really, it's really hard, but, you know, more, more people would be what they need, but they just don't have it, so... But the other stuff during the week is, is the mowing and thing, and that's, that's separate from, you know, getting the ball field ready. But, Thank yeah. you for yep. at least speaking to Ruby. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So, okay, so indoor spaces. Um, so you can, you can go. Okay. Keep going. On. Um, You're on a roll. <laughs> uh, we run the Aquatic and Sailing Center at JK Middle School um, when school is not in session. So we operate... Um, 53 hours a week we averaged out um, when school is not in session early in the mornings from 5 30 till about 8 and then um, 3 to 9 every night and then on the weekends um, so we also use the gym there we rent that out to lots of groups and that's um, uh, brings an additional income for that facility there um, and then we program the city school gyms um, during the winter time um, so when they're not again when they're not in use by the schools we program those because there's um, as you know, lots of different groups who want to get in to use our city facilities, and so they come to our department, and we um, prioritize those by um, the agreement we have with the school committee on that. Um, the next slide are some of our fun pictures we wanted to share with you. Um, these are real pictures of kids enjoying our programs, um, and we just wanted to 
share with you some of the, hit on each thing that we do, but these are youth sports that we do. Um, basketball teams, there's a number of 40 basketball teams. Um, right now we're currently in t-ball, um, coaches pitch in softball season, um, and in the fall we have soccer. Um, we have an ultimate frisbee team that's been that's a new trend in New England and across the country is ultimate frisbee, so we're happy to offer that to kids. Um, tennis lessons at JFK Middle School. We have track that's currently going on. Um, junior cycle cross, which is a, a cool program that we hold at Look Park, um, which it's, uh, combines mi mountain biking um, and um, racing, essentially. So that's a new program that we collaborate with Northampton um, Cycling Club on to run for the community. Um, golf lessons we offer for adults, youth, um, and flag football we have in the fall. And we have also middle school field hockey um, that we offer for. And that's not an all-inclusive list. That's, um, we're always looking to add new things, but that's what we have going on. It's a really extensive program that you guys run. My daughter is super psyched for soccer. She did pre-K soccer. That's <laughs> K soccer in the fall, and she, can't, she keeps asking me, like, is it time? Nice. <laughs> And these are the ones that um, we run directly. There's also a variety, which we'll have a list later, of the different um, groups we collaborate with. But these are the ones we run directly, actually take the money and registrations. And then um, there's a whole bunch of other groups out there that are volunteer groups that they run um, the league themselves. Usually run by groups of parents. So these are some of our adult sports and some of the, some pictures from things recently. Um, and we have lots of softball leagues in the fall and um, in the summer for both men and co-ed. Um, we have a co-ed volleyball league in the winter time, uh, mostly held at Smith Folk. Um, men's and women's pickup basketball that goes on year round um, at JFK Middle School. Um, and again, all kinds of tennis lessons and tennis classes um, from classes that you can do with your child to uh, tennis leagues. Um, and then also open basketball for kids. And that's uh, all with kids. fees, correct? Yep, yep. Um, and then again, more about um, some of the stuff we do at um, JFK Middle School. Um, we run the pool there, so we offer swimming lessons, water aerobics classes. We have three water aerobics classes that are often full with various um, aging. Uh, recreation, lap and recreation swimming, we sell memberships, people who can just want to come and exercise and do their lap swimming and um, there's quite a few of those so that's open certain times for people to do that. We have youth diving classes, um, we teach uh, youth how to become lifeguards, we have lifeguard training classes which um, is kind of a feeder program for our staff um, but it works out good as a service to our community too. And then we have things like kayak polo who rents the pool in the, in the winter time in the evening. Um, we run the facility out to people who want to have birthday parties and then people like Girl Scout groups or different groups who just want to come in with their group and um, swim and have some pizza, we do that as well. And then we have um, an adult knitting class that's been going on for probably 10, 12 years. It's just a hardcore group of people that meet every Wednesday night to knit. So it's really a neat, neat thing. And then we also have lots and lots of special events. Um, and we listed up there some of them, Boston sports trips. Um, New this year, in honor or memory of Ray Ellibrook, we have a memorial golf tournament um, in July um, that we're actually fundraising money to um, help supplement field maintenance in the city. So that's a really new, exciting thing we're doing. Um, Salute to Summer is something at 1812. They're um, hosting with us to raise money for the Florence Fields. Uh, first, so we're going to talk a little bit about the um, money that we're raising there. So that's um, another community collaboration we do. The Family Fourth is coming up in a couple weeks, and we're excited about that. Um, the Egg Hunt um, we is in April, the Memorial and Veterans Day parades we're involved in. There's a picture in the top right um, of Mayor Narkowitz that was um, at the uh, let's see, Veterans Day parade. I think we drew, drove our new bus in there with kids oh, this year, <laughs> waving out the windows. And I'm sorry about that. Yeah, and that was that was great, very successful. And then you know we try to we do some things around holidays. So a Halloween we had a Halloween monster mash, Cupid's family dance, uh, turkey sports shoot. We do ice cream bingo in the winter time. We do a, a, a it's called the Mayor's Youth Dance, but it's a um, eighth grade dance at the Garden House every May for the eighth graders at, J, at JFK Middle School. Um, and we have other golf tournaments. Um, we have been doing an annual road race, and then we also have the Pulaski Park tree lighting here. It's become a tradition in the first week in December. And then now we're super busy gearing up for our summer camps, which is one of my favorite times of the year. But we have, you know, in any given week, 400 kids um, 
out enjoying doing wholesome recreation activities. So there's, we offer stuff for kids ages four all the way up through 10th grade for day camps, and they're listed there at the top left. And then we also have summer sports and drill, skills and drills programs, which are more focused on sports, but also offer kids those opportunities to get out and do something. So I love all the pictures of the kids. <laughs> Um, and Museani Beach. We run Museani Beach. It's been open since Memorial Day on the weekends. Next week it opens full time, seven days a week. Um, and we're pretty fortunate to have a beach like that right here in Northampton. Um, and we ha are, it's staffed by our lifeguards and it's tested um, weekly. It is, complies with the local and state regulations for beach operations. Um, and it's really, uh, a lot of families utilize that. Um, in North Canada as a, as a place, an inexpensive place to cool off with their families, and our summer camps use it a lot as well, so fortunate to have that. Um, and then here's, we, we just want to throw in some other unique programs that we do. We do some Play Well Lego programs, karate, after school skiing. Um, we take advantage when the kids are out of school, we always try to um, come up with an affordable option for families, so we run vacation week programs. Or schools out programs, which are days when they have their random days off of school, we will have offer some kind of program for parents who are working to put their kids in. Um, we have counselor and training programs along with our camps to, for younger people to try to teach them and give them an opportunity a little bit to work with kids. Um, and then we train um, our coaches, our volunteer coaches. As you can imagine, we need a lot for all those sport programs, so we do that. Um, and then we also supervise and coordinate the Northampton Community Gardens. Um, so this is a list of just some of the groups. I'm sure we've missed a few, but um, these are all some of the different groups that we team up with, we work with to help um, offer these these programs and different things to the community. So you can see all the different organizations listed there that we do. You can see. Um, when I mentioned earlier, there's different leagues that are run um, with private leagues, meaning they have they're all volunteers who give tons and tons of time to the to the city and the youth of the community and help run um, and give. You know, it's not their full time job. They do it nights and weekends and and all day sometimes to help run some of the different leagues that are listed there. So we collaborate with them and help them with scheduling and um, we know answer all the. <coughs> Try to logistically get everybody to fit the big puzzle where so everybody can play it um, when they want to. So those are all the different organizations that we work. We also sit on some of their boards to help them in any way we can to, um, with organizing and running their leagues. So we also offer um, scholarships and fee assistance to to families. So we try. I mean, whenever possible. Which um, sometimes for summer camps we just run out of our our allotment of scholarships, but we usually can can do something for people. Um, but last last year it was over five thousand dollars of financial assistance, um, and in the winter time it, we also we have some different funds that people will donate to for for um, uh, for different um, sports programs and things. So we always try to give at least half a scholarship to everybody, and our our programs are really pretty affordable for the most part. Um, so we try to help people in that sense whenever. Assistance is needed. So. so we have a new Friends of Recreation Committee. Um, that is a committee. They are going to be doing fundraising and support of the departments um, and and the city's maintenance and needs of labor for um, current and future recreational activities in the city. So we've been wanting to do this for a while. Shelby's worked really hard on um, getting the articles of incorporation together with. Um, some of the volunteers who are on this friends committee, um, they were filed this May, so we're waiting to um, hear about the incorporation, and then we'll have a 501c3 status. They will have that, which is key to getting many, many more grants than what we currently um, qualify for. So we have a group, a good group of eight to ten, um, you know, qualified and dedicated people who are um, going to help with that. And we're always looking for more. If anybody knows anybody who wants to help. Um, so they're going to be doing more grants, more fundraising, and the first project they're um, going to be working on is at Florence Fields to raise money for more amenities there that um, we just didn't have enough funds to do yet. So that is a very big leap. <coughs> we 
just some little fun facts. So we, um, with all people who use the different facilities in the summer, we issue over 2,000 field permits each year. The people calling and wanting to get their practices and their games in different um, fields, baseball fields, soccer fields, softball fields, football, all that. Um, our icon has over about 15,000 eggs <laughs> that we spread around at Look Park. Um, we employ over 50 area youth, um, youth each summer, plus the others throughout the year at the pool in different um, times of the year. So we do that. Um, we do receive, a, there's a great um, many community donations from businesses and groups to help fund programs and sponsor teams. Uh, this past year is over $12,000 in actual monetary donations, like $800 to sponsor the hats for T-ball or $100 to sponsor that basketball team and your name gets on the back of the shirt. So we have a really great community support, I mean, in this community of um, supportive people who um, pretty much you ask them for things and a lot of times they'll come through and help. So that's really nice. Um, let's see. What else? So on there, there's just some different um, comments that we get from people throughout the year about um, that. We often programs. send out um, evaluations at the end of every program, um, and we usually send out a little postcard that they can just drop in the mail, and then we will pay for the postage. And um, we're always looking to improve on things. And, what was good experience and what was not. And so these were some of the really positive things that we got from that and we wanted to share with you. Okay. Oops. So I want to thank you, Marie, and I want to thank oh. you for doing this presentation. Mm -hmm. It's extremely helpful. And I think, and hopefully, we are being videoed. At least I know with Ruth's and May I ask who you are, please? I'm with 22, but we're actually here just about the uh, braille being set up for like different restaurants and stuff Oh yeah, like that. that's that's nothing new. We've done that last year. Okay, well. But, no, but that's great. All right, we're covering that's it. That's the next group. Yeah. Okay. That's not me. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so yes, and Shelby, is, I want to thank Shelby for, she put together very a lot of the um, PowerPoint, so she's good at that stuff. I would really suggest that at some point to come to City Council mm -hmm. and ask our Council President, Bill Dwight, to place you in and do a presentation and show the public that stuff. Mm -hmm. This is really helpful. Yeah. Good. Um, Good. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for coming to talk to us today. What, I assume you're always busy, but this maybe is like the busiest time of year. It is, you yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Thank you for taking yes. this time. We really, really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I, I just had a couple of quick questions. So, I was interested about, so the board, you said that some people have been on for 20 years, mm -hmm. or yep. that's amazing, I mean, that's an amazing commitment that someone's made, and it's like, what's the process for bringing in new board members, and? Yeah, every, every, pretty much within the past, you know, 10 years or so, every, they're, they're um, I think they're up every two years, if I want to say, two or three years, and then there's always someone, we have someone leaving now, and people have applied, they've sent down, ever since they set up the new website, the, um, there's a nice page for volunteers. Uh -huh. So people um, will send in applications to the mayor's office and they have them on file okay. and things. So they have um, people down there who are in the future interested. If it comes up, if an opening comes up, you know, and um, there's been there's been a turnover every every year there's a couple. That's good. So, so you have like yeah. this great combination of people who have all this historical knowledge yep. and then new, fresh ideas. Absolutely, also. yeah. Good. And people who are, in, who are new, maybe new to town or who are involved in a certain program or, or league or something and, and want to come in and kind of see how it all works together and, and work with it. So yeah, it is nice. Great. nice. Good, just good combination. I read an article in the paper last week, I forget who the mayor was, that was doing a turnover with all the boards and so forth. And sometimes I think that's a really good idea because to me, if you're on a board for a period of whatever, 18, 20 years, that's a long time. And I have to agree with what Councilor Gina Luis Guerra is saying about new faces, mm -hmm. different ideas, a different vision. Yep, it's a real good combination. Exactly. You have the people who know how things happened and why, how, how some part got to be like it is or why some program is like it is and what changed 10 years ago to make it that way. And then you have the new people who are coming in questioning like, okay, well, why is that? Oh, well, it's done this way from, you know, for this reason. So it is a really nice combination when you have, have that because you have fresh ideas or fresh questions of like, well, why, is it, why don't you try it like this or, you know, so. 
Yeah, also, good. to you know, we approved um, through our budget a new credit tax credit program. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are is the recreation department going to be involved yep. with that for seniors? We are. And for veterans, we are on it for um, actually up at the pool for help with the um, reception area at the pool. So, and actually, we just had a conversation with. Patty today, the email about if she's got anybody coming in. So she seems like she's got some good interests in different things. And she's interviewing different people in this coming week. For the recreation? So for, yeah, she, I mean, they'll, they'll, yeah, she's seeing where different people are going to fit in or what their interests are. So, yeah, so that's exciting. I think that yep. is yep. exciting. Yep. It's opening the doors. Yes. And hopefully we'll add on again next year another added on amount of taxpayers in the city mm -hmm. so that we can keep them here to live in the city of North Bampton. Mm -hmm. I thank you for that. Can I ask one quick poll question? Mm -hmm. A bunch of people have mentioned me the chili. Yeah. Which I, yeah. I assume is a budget that we works. actually well there was let's say what we're gonna be meeting when the new superintendent comes into town comes, starts and and with the school committee to start going through the agreement with the recreation usage mm -hmm. and the school usage and the swim team usage because mm -hmm. everybody has different temperatures they would like it at. Oh, so we want it warmer, swim team wants it a little cooler, school mm -hmm. PE classes want it, you know, warmish. So, right. you know, it's sort of, it's a balancing act with, and then sometimes the equipment was breaking. They're actually getting a new, in the capital improvements, there's a new system, I think it's called a Dectron system, there's a new system that Central Services has put in for capital improvements to, because um, the system up there is, is from when it was built 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that will help with the air quality and controlling the temperature okay. and all that. So that's all in the works. And yes, there is. Okay. There's, yeah. I've heard a lot of people said, yeah. who have said that they would use it more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We hear that so, okay. sometimes too. With, and some, yeah, with the difference. So we, we hope that if the new system, I'm not sure the funding of it, what, if it went through or not, it's, but it's on the capital plan through central services. So that would be nice if it do we, did them. Yeah. Do we also have programs available for the recreation department for children with special needs? Yep. Yeah, anyone can. We, we sometimes get um, kids in summer camp mm -hmm. that I mean, we accommodate people as best we can with the different programs that we have. The pool is accessible um, with a, uh, a lift, um, summer camps. You know, we work with different groups. Sometimes they'll have um, aides that will come with them and be with them through the day. Sometimes we have a one-on-one, -on -one, we call it staff, who is assigned to that child for, for the duration of their um, camp stay with us if they need it. So, yep. How about, like, busing? At one point there was some um, I attended some of the meetings with some of the parents. And that was with the problems that we had down by Island Road, and then with the soccer team. Okay. Them. Yep. But also, the question came up about busing for our youths here in the city of Northampton after school programs. Mm -hmm. How do you handle that if there is a problem of a child not being left behind yep. because of no transportation? Yeah, we don't we don't really program a lot of after school programs. Only on special like half days, um, sometimes or like when they have um, for special events. But we don't have a regular after school program that we do in the schools. Each school kind of does their own. Okay. <coughs> like I know my kids go to Leeds. They have a, they have a special Leeds after school program and after school care. But every school has their own okay. their own thing going on. Okay. So we we we've, we've actually talked about getting into that in the future. Some kind of after school programming and collaborating with the school department and I hope you know in the future with a new superintendent and maybe some stability in the future coming on that's something we can we, we would love to talk about that helping provide those kind of things so okay. and um, I think you also talked about the budget which we know as counselors yep the mm -hmm. fees um, which were funded at 69 percent about that right around yep. that yeah and 31 percent is coming out of a general fund correct yes we, yep i'm very happy yep. about um, them changing the law through the cpa mm. it was about a year ago i think mm. it was i'm not sure about that's been huge for that's a for group one. for the for the kids and that's everybody it's open the doors mm -hmm. i mean look what we're doing at bridge street school mm -hmm. plus Park, 
It's the best thing that's yeah. 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 So, okay. what would you like us to do as counselors to, to move forward, to help you out in any which way we can? Are there, is there anything that you would like us to do to help you? Like a million dollars? Uh, no. No, I think I think just the um the knowledge of how things work is a big thing because we we get a lot you know just and just being able to pass on knowledge and this this you know just being able to say this is what we do you know DPW does this planning does this you know kind of the collaboration and, and the, the knowledge factor of who you know and, and always talking and asking questions. When needed, you know, and I, and I think you do that anyway. So if you have a question, you know, I'll get emails or calls like, oh, how does this work, and why, why didn't this get done this way? Oh, okay, well, that's because this department does that, and this department, you know, so just you know, and always I, just and keeping the lines of communication open. I think it's and I it's do nice. know that mostly everything that you do come in, no matter if it's funding or something a new project. You explain it very, very thoroughly to us counselors, mm -hmm. and that's important. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are such a vibrant city yep. because we work together. Mm -hmm. That's what makes Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is great. Yeah. Oh, okay. But well, try to talk to our counselors yeah, sure. that and come sure. in because I think this is okay. really Maybe excellent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. If I can get this off without disrupting you. Also, too, um, I'd like to introduce, and I, I apologize for this, the counselor from Ward 4, Jim and Louise Scarra, and I'm so counselor Mary on the barge of Ward 6. Thank you. Sorry. Are you covering the rail? Am I? Yeah. No. They're, They're coming in. Minutes of the meeting. Oh, okay, sorry. They're coming yeah. in.
since we got some time, I will talk about September um, agenda. I'm looking at safe passage, of which I've already got the clearance on that, coming in at 4.05 p.m. to 4.45. The Human Rights Commission from 5 o'clock to 5.30, and they've got clearance on that. And I know with Alyssa and um, Counselor Gina Willis-Skira, we're looking at possibly Donna Bell, is that her name? Donna Bell. Yes. And I haven't heard back from Alyssa on that, if she definitely is coming or not. Then October right now, which I'm becoming really full housed here, with a lot of people coming in. October at 4 or 5, we have Joanne Campbell coming in from who is the Director of Valley Community Development. And I know that there will be a lot that Joanne will be talking about on affordable housing and about homelessness here in the city of Northampton. At 5 o'clock, we have Lynn Wallace, who is the Chair of the Northampton House and Partnership, and that has been cleared. They will be coming in at 5.30 p.m. I also have um, Steve Connors coming in, our veterans agent. I want to go back up to July 21st, because I'm not sure if I know this one. Um, Forbes Library, I have asked them to come in. Diana Moulton emailed me over the weekend, and it is a definite. They will be coming in at 5.30 p.m. Um, November, right now, I'm looking at possibly service not coming in because of the shelters being open, soup kitchen and all that, and getting other organizations to come in, plus we need more arts and um, cultural and recreation coming in also. That's it. And I guess we don't have anybody here for the open for the public to speak, so we have, we can take a break for about five minutes. Five-minute break because we actually don't have you on the agenda until five o'clock. Okay. Perfect. All right. Okay. Thank okay. you. I'm very curious about why, because Alyssa turned that on. I was right near her when she turned that camera on. Uh, I think it, it might have been that the camera went on, but then record wasn't. It could also be that somebody forgot to change the battery. So the battery went dead? Oops. I, Are we in a break at the moment? Yes, I'm sorry. Would yeah. anybody want to do like an interview on the Braille? Like being more? It would be Tori Eflin, definitely. Would you want to do that, Tori? He's from um, 22. Just to spread the awareness of how much it helps to have Braille around? and. Sure. I, I was just, um, I had heard that you were here, and I was just trying to think. I don't actually have the list of the restaurants right on me that are. Mm -hmm. We actually have a list back at the station. Oh, you do. But we just wanted to get an opinion on, like, you know, how from somebody it first hand, how much it's going to help, you know? Sure. I recently went in and used one of them. So did you want to do that now? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Yes. That's 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 cool. Cool. Absolutely. Right. Right. Thank Thank you. You. Huh? You can do it right here, right? Okay, yeah, sure, that's no problem. You can have a seat we'll right next to her. Yeah, yeah, that's no problem. All right, let me and sit up and make sure I'm nice. <laughs> you okay. can. Okay. I'm so glad I wear cross today. <laughs> 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 I wish I hadn't come straight from crossing guards. 
Tori is the um, chair of the Commission on Disabilities. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So we're just taking a of being here to show your visibility to counselors 
and I want to introduce the counselor from Ward 4, which is Gina Luis Guerra, okay, and City Council of Area of Irish Basin Chair. Okay, so Tori, you're going to talk on plans on collaborating with other area commissions on disability groups? Sure. So um, we have the agenda. Should I just go through the items one by one? Yeah, that was one of them on there. That was number one. That's okay, the first one. Okay. okay. So, yes, we had at a recent meeting, we had gotten the idea um, that we could perhaps be more visible and have more impact if we join forces with other local commissions on disability. So um, we are inviting at least the chairs and hopefully some members of um, other committees to our September meeting. And we thought that we would start with Amherst, Hadley, and East Hampton because those are geographically close to us and perhaps all together we would be able to make an impact on this area. Um, so that's a way to open dialogue, um, get to know them, have them get to know us, and try to figure out what issues they're working on, what issues we're working on, and figure out ways that we can collaborate. So we're pretty excited about doing that. And Tori, I just wanted to let the commission know that I've made three calls already, and I got a call back um, I think on my paper with you, Joe, I think his name is from Stravos. From Zavros? Yes. Oh, Joe from Raleigh. Yep, <coughs> and I had a monthly talk today, oh, and he definitely is coming. Oh, fantastic. the round table. Some of the telephone numbers are going right into city halls of the towns, and it's becoming difficult to try to reach other people. Mm -hmm. But I think Ruth is going to step in, and she's going to help me. So I think we just moved to Amherst or Hadley, I'd like to see us get other towns involved also. And Tori, yeah. I agree with you 100%. You're opening up the doors, the commission is, of uh, getting more people to work together. Yes, and we are also looking forward to having Janet Shaw from Stavros join us tomorrow night to um, for us all to be able to work together with that as well. I also would announce um, we have another Commission that just arrived. Attorney Winston is here. Thank you for being here. Excellent. Thank you. If you'd like to join us, you can grab a chair and go up. Okay. But thank you very much for everything, buddy. They'll be on at um, 11 o'clock tonight. Um, hopefully, you guys can check it out. Thank you. Not, I'll post online. Right? Thank you. Thank you very, very much. much. No problem at all. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Yep. Okay. I'm not comfortable on those chairs. Okay. I'm just going to stand. Okay. I'm going to flat chair. Okay. Okay. Um, so, the next thing that we wanted to update you on would be uh, handicap parking. And we have been working with the DTW to have a handicap parking space in front of Word on Maple Street. Um, it's gone through ordinance and transportation, and now we the way um, the city council to you all. And I will be coming to the city council on Thursday to Um, so for that because um, we feel that it's really important. Several residents of Florence have asked about it and said that it would be really helpful for them. And that's what we're all about is helping people in our community. So um, we had also been requesting a handicapped space in front of Ms. Florence Diner, but um, as the ordinances were being reviewed, it was found that there was already an ordinance for a spot there. So um, it had just it had happened that um, the sign was never installed. So we've been in, we've been in touch with the DW to ask for the installation of that sign. Um, I'm not, I'm sure. I do have to say that we attended an ordinance committee meeting. Our ADA coordinator Pat Shaughnessy and I um, just about a week ago, mm -hmm. and there was a big problem here. 
the handicapped ordinance was placed way back in 1999, and wow. the sign never went up on the corner park where the Florence Diner is. So that's going up because we have good news. We during ordinance our handicapped spots in Florence got the okay from the ordinance committee, which is um, another handicapped parking going on the corner on Maple Street by Bird Store. So we've got two signs. So for them to go ahead and just go, it's like, let's put one up, they're going to put both of them up together, and we'll be all set. So we'll have a total of two handicapped parkings, um, parking spots in Florence, and I think there's one down by on the corner okay. by the bank, by the Florence Savings Bank. That has a right. sign. Yes. yes. And is there a date for the installation of the other two? We don't know yet until it is just approved by City Council. Right. I think it might. Is it coming, Pammy? Thursday. Yep. But so it'll two wait votes. for the sign that should have gone up in nine months. <coughs> so that's why we're hoping, because of these two passing, that this will solve the problem and we'll be able to move on and get both of them installed. Thank you, Tori. We've also worked on um, sidewalk enhancements um, in front of City Hall. And um, anyone, any, anyone, Mike, does anyone have anything they want to say about that? Well, yeah, there are a number of places where sidewalks could definitely be uh, downtown. Um, one is in front of a former Baptist church. Um, now being for the years renovated and um, yeah, the sidewalk is I tend to stay in the street as much as I can because that's pretty bad it's not really great straight out in front of this building I mean, in front of the church you no know, this building has uh, a number of chunks outside so yeah, I mean there are just a number of places where those come up. I mean, one of the things about using a chair is that you feel every bone. You can't step over them. So you can go through every one and notice them. Michael, could you explain where in this location about the sidewalks? No, it just. Uh, I just noticed just coming in that there were a couple of chunks out in right in front of In front of the chambers high. or on Main Street? No, in this building. In front of the chambers, yeah. Right in front of the chamber? I mean the yeah. chamber here? Yeah, it'd be you know, I'm waiting for the technological development to get to fixing sidewalks. I know we could get a hold of central service and let them know about this, but after this meeting, maybe you could show us the area that we're talking about. Um, and Ruth also wanted to speak on sidewalks. The original ones that I brought up to the commission in the meeting, right in the handicapped spot in the corner, right out in the parking lot between City Hall and this room, is all torn up. I've fallen twice there after night meetings, and when I fall, I can't get up again. I've been very lucky that the guys went to get me up, but that's very dangerous. And the other problem with that parking space is when you park in it, you've blocked the access ramp. You can't get up on the sidewalk. I have trouble with curbs. I wore a brace on my leg, and my knees don't bend much, so when I fall, I'm down. Uh, and the other handicapped spot on the other side is also broken up sidewalk, but it's not as bad as this one up here. Didn't they just do work on this? The front. Last week. They're doing work in the parking lot this week, this past week, wasn't it? On the building. Yeah. Oh, it was on the building, building. Oh, on the parking lot. No. Oh, they just closed the parking lot. Should we talk to Central Service about that also? Could you get a hold of them? Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. And Michael will show us that meeting where he's talking about and what Luke is talking about. Mm -hmm. Because it's actually facts. If she does fall, she cannot get up. So an ambulance has to be called. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought we 
That's the eight. Yeah, eight. The plates. The fines on the hand. Oh, that, yeah, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. I thought, yes. I thought you were. I thought you were talking about um, no. the parking space. Yes. The um. That's what I. The, that's our thing. <laughs> yes. Um. So we were able to um, purchase a sound system for use at our meetings, which has been wonderful and helped a lot. Um, and we've also purchased a banner for use at um, COD exhibits and programs, yeah, as well as for carrying in parades, and we talked about, about doing that. I think, um, Ruth, you probably should speak about it because you suggested about getting the banner and we did get it. About the visibility at the Senior Center, you can talk because you do quite a bit of work with the volunteering for like the Senior Center for the Health Fair and that. And Michael this year also came in and helped us out with that. Right. We had a table at the Health and Safety Fair in May at the Senior Center and the banner was right on the front. Last year we had a table with no banner, just a white tablecloth and a few flyers, and most everybody just walked by because they had no idea who we were, what we were representing. So this year uh, we got a lot more publicity, a lot more uh, exposure. And can you talk about, either Tori or you or Michael, talk about the budget. What did we have in the budget for what, three, four years? No money. No money. We talked about yeah. what had yeah. happened. We didn't have money to do anything. There was nothing in the budget. There was nothing. We couldn't do anything. We couldn't even like print some flyers or do anything. And um, now that we have the money from the HP parking fine. And how did that happen? It happened because you and um, former counselor Casey uh, looked into that and made it happen. Exactly. And that's why there's importance of social services, veterans, and recreation and culture because if counselor Casey which also belonged to this committee with us. I invited him to come to the senior center, and he did, and he talked about, and he heard the voices saying, especially the ADA coordinator, there was no money in the budget. We couldn't breathe, we couldn't do anything, we couldn't expand, okay? Kevin and I got together, we went through, and looked at how do other cities or towns, how do they get that money? It took us a while, it took several months. We worked with the financial director at that point, and there it was. We found a way of doing it through the internal revenue, and we put the um, handicap plates with their fines in place, and we have now a good amount of money in our financial fund which we never had. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great because Ruth has started, you could talk about the library part that you're doing. And we, we now have a library for the, the commission. It has copies of all the minutes, all the agendas, any emails we get, literature we get. Uh, there are a lot of groups who send us catalogs, um, all different kinds of information. Um, we have contact with other disability groups that have sent us their minutes. They're all available in a large white binder, which is kept at the senior center where we had our meeting. It's just been great. Having the sound system has really made it better um, for our meetings. Yeah. Especially um, with members who are either partially deaf or deaf. And I being partially deaf was the greatest thing that could ever happen because I can hear what people are saying at our, at our commission meetings. It's so valuable. Yeah. And I think the price on that we paid was 4000 and something. And something, 200 and something, I think, 4200 and something. And we had the money to do it, yes. which is, is amazing. 
Um, and now we're really able to to do things to increase our visibility, which is actually the next item on the agenda is ways that we want to increase our, our visibility. Um, we have that banner and um, we will be wanting to use that at parades and at different events to let people know what we're doing um, and also to be able to <coughs> start collaborating with other committees and other groups and other agencies. Right. And what has happened was because we did this ordinance and worked it out with Chris Piles, our former financial director, not realizing at that time, even he didn't pick it up, that we had changed the Mass General Law. So we had to change the Committee on Disabilities to the Commission on Disabilities. That's where the big change was. Yeah. Okay, Tori, thank you. So next we have um, my favorite thing, successive braille and large print menus um, and possible plans to expand to other restaurants. And I have to say, personally, I, I this is a true story, what I told the person from Channel 22. Um, I went to Siam Square with my friends for lunch and I wasn't even thinking about it. I was, it was the weekend, I was just relaxing and I'm used to not having everything accessible, so I was just not even thinking about it. I was thinking, oh, yeah, she'll read the menu, the as usual. And um, the server came over to the table and said, oh, you have a braille menu. Would you like to use it? I was like, <laughs> I was so excited. It was so fun and nice to just be able to look at the stuff myself. She could be looking at seafood, and I could be looking at, you know, chicken and we didn't have she didn't have to be meeting everything out loud to you. And it was such a great feeling. It was so wonderful and I was so happy. It just it made my day. And where was this? This was at Siam Square. And they had the wherewithal to be observant and to ask me if I wanted that very respectfully, very nicely. And it was um, it was great. So I would love to see and encourage more restaurants to do that. I actually noticed that they also have like proudly display a, a sign in their window saying that they have real mm -hmm. menus. Um, and I haven't other I haven't seen other restaurants really take that step, but I think it's fabulous. Yeah, I think it would be an, I think it would be a good idea for the city perhaps to, you know, just put out a little three by five or just a little visible card for places to put. Or on their website, the city's website. Yeah. They should put that on their website. Yeah, I don't see it's on the website. I don't know what the restaurants are. Actually, I had a guy. Well, we have a list of them. I know. And I know Patty did tell you, Michael, at one of our meetings that she made them up and brought them to the restaurants. Right. Well, yeah, apparently they're not. If they're not using them, I know. can we get a city ordinance to require that they use them? Hmm. I don't know why this is. The commission do have a website? Yes. I'm sorry. And are they it's listed on the website? Just coming up. We were asked yes. by Joanne at the Senior Center who's going to be doing it. I used to do it. She's taking it over now. She's asked us for things that we'd like included, so that would be the perfect thing to give to her. Exactly. And I'll see her tomorrow awesome morning, thing. so I will bring her up to her. That would be great, yeah. I just have to tell you, that just made my day, it made my weekend. It was so great. Why don't you give, um... you have to step up at the entrance, so I can't get it. <laughs> well, that's not okay. No, it's not. It's not okay either. They that. Maybe you can give a little history, Tori, of Matt Ruth, about, and Michael, you were involved with it with us, correct? About the Braille Note. About how this all came about. Well, um, you brought it up at one of our meetings, right? As I, as, as I was going to have the other time. Oh, I went to, I brought it up because I happened to go to Applebee's and they offered me a braille menu. And I was like, wow, that was great. Why can't we have that in Northampton and why can't more restaurants do that? So we were talking in one of our um, 
Well, back then they were committee meetings. Now they're commission meetings. And I had suggested that that might be a good project to work on. Um, and we partnered with the bid, um, who actually underwrote the project and paid for the menus, which was extremely helpful. So um, I had gotten information, um, the talking to the library for the wine, um, the, local, the branch for Massachusetts is in Watertown. And they do that, they provide that service. They do um, translation of menus into Braille. Um, and I don't think it's, the large print was just done um, over here, I think. Because that's easy to do. But, um, so we collaborated with this. Um, the menus were done. And each restaurant is given two copies. Like they each get two Braille menus, and I believe two large print menus. And then they're updated annually. So um, it's pretty good. I mean, there may be minor changes in between. Things are always changing. But it's, it's pretty good. I, I, when I went to Siam Square that time, it was completely right on. Like what I ordered and the price and everything was right consistent with um, the print menu. So and it worked this, out really well. And this was not an easy chore because, and I think, Tori, if you can recall, and the commission now, that it was a hold back on this for a period of time. And we didn't sit back. We said, nope, we're not going to let it ride. And if you can recall, Tori, I distinctly said to you, we're not going to let it stop. We're going to move on with this. And we did. Yes, we did. You know, and it's, it, was, it took us some time. But we're hoping to open the doors to some of the restaurants up in Florence. That would be great. Yes, because everything is, seems like it's centered to Northampton, but we have people with disabilities up in Florence also. Yes, we do. I'm so, sad. Ruth, I don't know if you want to talk about Braille. And the um, I can tell you that my husband and I both have used large print menus at two different restaurants. Which ones were you? I don't remember. It was, it was a little while ago. It was not long after we instituted them. Um, I carry those glasses in my pocketbook. So using his glasses, that large print menu is invaluable. <laughs> <laughs> he hates it when I read it to him. <laughs> That's great. Um, I think Paul and Elizabeth is one of them, because no, right? Michael had suggested that, and we did go in and see them, and oh yeah, so we did hand deliver their their menus too. Um, and then we have the I think that's Willie's is is it oh Eastside Grill, East Grill their one. one. Well, yeah. Stay in Yakuza because he's yes. he was a former owner, so we had him come to one of our meetings. Mm -hmm. and, right. Uh, of course, he was still with the bid then before right. he retired, so okay. he, he helped with that. He helped a lot. Right. What was the other ones? Was it that small? What's the yeah. process to get a restaurant to sign up? Oh, um, they were all, I believe they were all sent a letter, okay. and they were given the opportunity that it was voluntary. And I have to say, there are some restaurants that I really like that I would that I go to all the time, but I was disappointed that they didn't sign on because they know me. They didn't just need some money. So uh, no. they, they, they could just be the, you know, this is the day. So right. maybe the next time I go to one particular one, I will remind, I will ask them and remind them. One that they know me really well, and I've been going there for years, and I go there frequently. Right. I know Dan Cuso and I forget the girl's name that was the secretary there. She has left yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. They had a lot of meetings with restaurant owners. It was not an easy job because it was a bad timing. We were under going into a recession and money was tight. So what's the cost to a restaurant? There's no cost to them. As well, the, the, bid, the bid has been because they belong to the bid. So why would a restaurant care about it? Because they want something to do it. Oh, they didn't want to Right. I see what you're saying. Okay, so the restaurant is one. It's a pretty it's a pretty minor cost to a restaurant. I, I don't want to be quoted as saying an exact cost, but I mean it it varies. It depends on the size and the length of the menu. But we're talking maybe average maybe like sixty 
$50 to do it. Like, say if a restaurant um, were not part of the bid and wanted to do this on their own and pay for it just because they felt that it's the right thing to do, which it is, um, it's, we're not asking them to pay hundreds of dollars to do it. You still need to have as many of those menus as right. the so others. Yeah, they exactly. have a few like of them. Like right. two, fine. Right, and then they make sure that their staff is trained and if they see someone that looks like that they're visually impaired. To offer that. Yes. Well, I mean, the good news is you know that the, the rules around participation in the bit have changed, and yeah. um, which has had its own issues. But so it, it will soon be that if the bid moves forward in our business. Well, so there's two suits. Yeah. Yes. Right. Board, so. But if, if everything were to move forward and there, everyone needed to participate, that would probably open a lot of oh, yeah. mm -hmm. doors for the restaurants to participate in this program, right? And there'll be some anchors in. Well, it's really fun. I mean, it's all about the topic, but it's divided the city right down the two. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the good news will be for Braille menus. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to focus on the positive, yeah. which is yeah. that if there's yeah. full participation, right. Right. whether mandatory or not, yeah. then all the restaurants can comply with having Braille menus. Yeah. I mean, even like great. the friend lines. Yeah. Friend I mean, I've gone up, right 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 up there to Florence, talked with the manager. Never got a response. The, the, yeah. the, they should have more flexibility because friendly is their still a corporate structure and if one restaurant does it, I think they have to get approval. But for the restaurants that are down here, it. right, that, it's exactly, mm -hmm. but the, the restaurants time. down here that just have one single owner, that right. should just be an easy decision to do it. The, the, it's a relatively lighter cost. The big thing is education. Yeah. Exactly. The big thing with every disability, every function, it, the people have to be educated. They have to know that even that it's available. And we went to Friendly's mm -hmm. and talked with the manager and was like, yeah. well, I mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to the owners of my favorite restaurant that didn't do it. Um, Who's that? Uh, India House. India House. Because I love that restaurant. Oh, is that the one on the um, State Street? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I've been in there once. I'll show that. They're, they're, um, they're, they are very much have They have amazing food and it would be great if they could have a consciousness to become wheelchair accessible and also to do the rail menu. So um, I'm going to try that. I bet you they'll do there it. There is a proceeding in the summer. So right. I guess you have seasonal access. So <laughs> Michael, you can only eat there in the summer. Yeah. There are a lot of places right there. Yeah, in the summer. Uh, well, that's, that's the kind that's what, that's what this commission is about. Right. Recognizing right. those. Recognizing and yeah, but that's serious better. with what he just said. Yeah, it is serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. It is serious. It is. It definitely needs to be better. And we also had concerns from Rodney Kunif. Do you remember mm -hmm. at JFK? And we were with Comcast when they had that hearing going on. And um, closed caption he talked about. He also talked about civil rights, about his rights of being completely deaf. Okay, mm -hmm. not being able to know what's going on with city council meetings on TV or yep. anything. And it, it's a big concern here, and it is a civil rights issue. Yeah. It is. Uh, absolutely. Um, the next yep, item is um, that we will continue to work with PDTA on paratransit and service and encourage them to um, make that the best it can be. Um, we have had representatives from um, PDTA and um, Foods Transportation, which is the, the, the contractor, but PDTA con um, subcontracts to Hughes Transportation, and Hughes Transportation actually runs the service. Um, we've had them come to several meetings. There have been ongoing concerns that um, myself and other consumers of that service have passengers, whatever, um, have had in terms of just driver courtesy and appropriate scheduling and um, things like that. So it's been helpful to touch base with them once or twice a year to just um, remind them that we're here and we're watching and we expect to have good service. And I, um, similar to the rail menus, I also have a high personal interest in that because I 
blaming myself. My coach is a journalist, which I'm mm-hmm. If you want to say anything, anyone else on the phone? No, I use PBTA all the time. Yep. And now that I'm retired, I don't use them every day anymore. But I can really see where your concern comes from. Because if they don't show, I don't get to work. Mm-hmm. But now, you know, now it's, if they don't show, I don't get to work. Well, that's not good either. You have right, no, it is easy at all. But anyway, um, you know, I am been struck by the newest um, kind of PPA thing is that you call, tell them when you want your ride, and then they call you back the night before your ride and tell you when they're going to do it. With an automated system. With a oh, this is terrible. custom. This is for customer. My customer two three eight five. If anyone ever wants to know. Two eight four eight. <laughs> Sounds like our, our recording of our record. It you know, really a song. is. And it's all spliced together. Oh, it's horrible. It's like, it's. Um, I think it's just it, it's a reflection of the increased dehumanization in our society, where you know every time you call anything, you get like a complicated voicemail menu, and it takes at least ten minutes to get to a human being. Mm-hmm. So this is sort of like similar. Now they don't think even human beings call us. We have this. <laughs> so I wonder if there's any complaints coming in. I wonder. Um, I find it to be tolerable, but annoying. What I find to be intolerable and beyond annoying is when drivers are rude or um, don't show up. I have many stories which I'm not going to share here because it's huge. Um, but there, it's like it's unbelievable things have happened. Um, there are times, to be fair, when it runs perfectly smoothly and things are great, but when they don't, it's really important and people can be really damaged by that. Or could you give some examples because we do have time? Sure. I just didn't want to. No. We you have know, time. I'm very passionate on this topic. So, um, okay. So I will give some examples. And Michael, use it too. So feel free to okay. tell me. Ruth. And Ruth, do you use it? No. Okay. I didn't think so. Um, so I got on the van one morning and I asked the driver. I said, "Are we going straight to my office? Or are we making any stops along the way?" I like to know because I like to sort of know how long my ride is going to take, and it's a reasonable question. I have a ride to know, and I also can't see to know if we're stopping somewhere. So the driver said to me, it's not my job to talk to you. I'm not going to answer that question. You'll get there on time. That's all you need to know. I said, excuse me? (laughs) I said, I have the right to know, and I'm asking you, and I'm I'm going to ask you, you know, I'm going to ask you again. Can you please give me that information? can't see, I need the information. She refused to give me the information. So I said, all right, that's fine. I'll just use my cell phone and I'll call dispatch and I'll get the information from them and I'll also report your behavior. That's totally fine with me. So I did. And then I told dispatch what was happening and I reported her behavior. She still wouldn't talk to me. And they were very angry and um, called her in and watched the video of the way that she had treated me. And um, I'm assuming that some kind of disciplinary action took place. They told me that they had done something. I get, I'm not allowed to know what, and that's fine. But um, that was pretty awful. And had I not been me, and had the wherewithal, first of all, to have the privilege of having a cell phone, and to have the privilege of having the ability to make the call and speak coherently when I was enraged, and scared that this person might take out her anger on me because she was driving me. Probably, in retrospect, wasn't the smartest thing to do, but um, I needed to do it because I needed to know what was happening Mm -hmm. in my world, and I needed to do that, so. Let's see, that's a is it is there video on every video? Yeah. Oh that's great. So the, they can so always go back They just the pulled the video. Oh, that's great. And I said to the person, I said to the person that I spoke to to do the complaint, I said, um, I said, you know, I was not rude to this driver. And I said, but theoretically, even if I was, you ever heard that saying the customer was always right? 
Like, mm -hmm. the person providing the service needs to be the bigger person and do the right thing. Um, so that was one example. So another example fairly recently, I'm walking towards the van, and this driver says to me, come on, it's okay. I'm going to come to get you. And I said, please stop patronizing me. And then I realized that he didn't even know what patronizing meant. <coughs> <laughs> and he said, he said, oh, okay, I'll stop. And I'm like, obviously you didn't understand because you're continuing to do it. Um, <laughs> and it was just like that the whole way was just sort of rude and tantalizing comments. And then when we got off and um, I clear, I obviously I had like my this big work bag here and all my stuff like in my right hand. So he walks over to my right side with my full hand and tries to have me to take his arm on that side. And I said, um, you need to move over to the other side because I have stuff in that hand. He's like, well, OK, you don't have to be rude about it. And I said, um, really? It's just being obvious. Um, so things like that. Then there's another woman who might be a local I'm talking about. I'm not going to name names because the point is not to like yes. hurt people. But um, Michael knows. She, despite the fact that I have repeatedly told her that my disability is um, not in my hands, so that putting my seatbelt on is not a problem, she'll just like reach over and invade my personal space and put my seatbelt on. Um, and she is very patronizing and annoying as well. She's like, hi, how are you? Okay, we're gonna go now. You know, it's like, it's stuff like that that people shouldn't have to tolerate when they just want to go to work. Mm -hmm. um, so, have you had stuff like that? Uh, well, uh, you probably have. Uh, well, probably not quite as much because I'm not. I'm not. You know, oh, that's um, true. Yeah. And you so, don't use it every day. You said like I do. Yeah. And um, I mean, email is another part of the equation. Mm -hmm. My issues with them have tended to be less personal with drivers and more like I had a ride, you know, and like I say, I don't use them often now, but I had a ride scheduled and so I'm outside waiting for the ride and the guy just cruises past. So my PCA, you know, kind of went out and to figure out, you know, what is this guy's problem? And had, you know, and, and told him that this is where you go. And then, you know, which is, um, it's not something that I, I suppose I would think in running a good business with uh, drivers or where it is that they should be going to pick up people. Um, but, yeah, it's, and, you know, like I say, my, you get a call the day before you're supposed to travel. Telling you what time. Telling you what time. And that time, you know, it kind of inevitably. It could be um, any time. So it's not the time you've asked for. It. No, it's not well, the time you've asked for. Well, it's the time they can fit you in. Right, it's not the time. Yeah. Like doctor's yeah, appointment. What if you have an appointment to get to? Um, so if you have an appointment at 9 o'clock, <coughs> they could pick you up at like 7.45 and you could Sitting outside the building for an hour, like let's say it's a place that doesn't open until nine, or right. like that. Exactly. I mean, you will be there at but the time you're supposed to be. But there's no. But, but it's you really will know you could be there, you know, two hours or on the other side of. So they bring you out in front of a building. What about winter time when it's cold out? They just bring you outside. I don't know, to be fair, because like I primarily use it for work and I can't get into my building anytime. Right. And I don't know what they would do if I couldn't. So I don't really know. Yeah, this would be a good thing to do to get an update. Um, it would be. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, I would like to talk to the yeah, EPA. We should bring them in. We'll, we'll, yeah, we should bring them in in the fall, I think. Yes, yeah, definitely. So um, I have had other, I mean, I've had scheduling issues too. Like I've had drivers be late, and um, oh, this is a really good one. This this will this will give everyone a good laugh. I'm laughing about it in retrospect. I didn't think it was funny at the time. So um, I'm standing by the door, waiting for my ride, and for some reason I didn't hear um, the telltale like the beep 
you know, that the man was coming. Because I don't know why. They didn't back up. They didn't beat. And no one, none of the sighted members of my household were home. And the driver didn't come to the door to let me know they were there. So I had no idea that the man was there. So I get a call on my phone. And they said, your ride is out there. And they're about to leave. And I said, really? I said, well, I've been standing right here waiting. And no one let me know they were there. And the guy said, can't you see them out there? <laughs> I said, do you know who you're talking to and what my disability is? Like, are you aware of who you're calling and what my situation is? And this was a dispatcher that I knew. It wasn't anyone new. It's one that I've known, you know, and that knows me, and I know they know me. And then he was just like, oh, I'm sorry. So I reported that to you. That should not have been said to me. Oh, that's terrible. I did have one bad episode, which is why we don't use the buses at all. You might remember, it was, remember when we had the demo down here about the new buses? Yep. I can't get into a bus because there's stairs, and I have trouble with stairs. The new ones are nice, they lay down and I can walk right up. No, yeah, don't they flatten but, down? And, yeah, yeah, but I still have a problem because to get my leg to move, I have to swing it. Mm -hmm. And the, the width of the door isn't wide enough mm -hmm. for me to swing right. my foot and get in. When my husband got a job in East Hampton, we decided to try and figure out the bus route. Mm -hmm. We got as far as the first bus, and the driver got out and took his hands and tried to push me up by my butt. Oh! That was the end of that. That's, <laughs> that's not good. It no. was ready to flatten him. I mean, it was just... That's not good. It's not that I couldn't lift myself up. I couldn't swing my leg enough to get it past the side of the door, you know? Right, right. Yeah, and we, I've never done a bus again since then. And you're right of what you've been saying, education is very, very valuable. Mm -hmm. And I think now with having a round table in September and getting the other commissions from other towns coming in and making that bridge, we work together, show the visibility. Here, here we are, and the banner is going to be excellent. And yeah. we'll be working on that for the Veterans Day Parade. And hopefully we can find some children Sign for the yes, commission. Yes. <laughs> um, and Ruth, I've been told that you're going to be speaking about the mention. Oh, yeah. I'm going to skip the first part and introduce myself. I'm the secretary for the North Hampton Commission on Disability. She does a wonderful job. Oh, thank you. I hate you to say that. <laughs> I've, been, I've been asked to present to you the two park benches the commission is going to purchase to be placed in the center of Florence. The vibrant sidewalk resolution, which will be coming before City Council in the near future, should include Florence. These benches will help make the center of Florence more neighbor-friendly, provide a welcome resting place for families, senior citizens, and the disabled. I have a picture of the six-foot bench that is being considered. <laughs> These benches are similar to the benches outside the Council on Aging. And the City Council of the is going to discuss the location of the benches. Okay, we've done um, Patricia Shaughnessy, I, and Alyssa Klein, Councilor from Ward 7, who's on our committee, um, did a site visit together. Uh, I don't remember the dates on that. It was probably about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And we looked at over by Bird Store on the corner. And then we also looked at the wheat pizza by the post office and also right by Florence Diner in the front and there's a nice maple tree or whatever kind of a tree that is there. So I went into the restaurant because a very dear friend of mine owns it and uh, lives on my street and I brought her, I wanted them to meet her so I, we waited for a, her for Leah to come in on duty at the Florence Diner. So she finally came in, I went and got her, told her I wanted her to meet the consular from Ward 7 and our AD coordinator, Pat Shaughnessy, and what her thinking was. And right away we told her what we wanted to do about the benches, that we wanted to open the doors on vibrant sidewalks, and that's the reasons for benches is to make it friendly. The only places where we have benches in Florence is one at the bus stop by Valley Medical, 
the bench, just like we have the shop <coughs> one here. And then at the parts of the fountains, okay? Is that, to me, a lot of people don't like to cross the street and go over there and sit. Some people do like it. But I feel with the city of Northampton, we have the benches. I lived down here in Northampton all my life, and I think it's the greatest thing that can happen for seniors, for people with disabilities, for sitting down with your children and, and meeting different people. That's what you call vibrant sidewalks because of benches. So we went back on another site visit, and Alyssa could not attend that one because she had she to do something that following morning with her work. So Richard Pasoletti, who is the superintendent of streets, I and Pat Shaughnessy and Jim Lerillo met. And it was amazing because Jim Lerillo said, you know, Counselor, he said, I can't believe that you never have put benches on your sidewalk. And I said, well, Patty brought pictures of what we'd like to do on the Commission on Disabilities of donating to them. And Jim Lerillo was going to, he's on the board for the Florence Business Association to bring it to their attention of what the Commission on Disabilities would like to do. And if you look at the prices, we're not positive yet if it's lower or if it could be a little bit higher, okay? Um, but it would have plaques that the company does design. Our commission would talk about it at our next meeting, well, tomorrow, on uh, what we would like for a statement on the plaques. So it's something for all the commission to think about. And also, we'll have to do a financial order. That will have to come to city council for approval of that money so that we can order the benches. Okay, And we need to wait for Jim Lerillo, um to let us know about what occurs at the Florence Business Association. We really feel as there's not going to be a problem. And if there is, then we will have a meeting. And it will be a public hearing, and we will have many, many people who are disabled that will attend that meeting. So I just wanted to let you know, Councilor Scarra, I think it's a six-foot six bench. Okay. Yep. And um, is there any talk about maybe doing some fundraising around the businesses? For, for, for more? Yeah, we're, we're to, you know. We're just going to use our money for it. We have it. Okay. Okay, because fundraising, our commission, mm -hmm. okay, like Tori works all day, she can't go out and fundraise. Michael, he probably could talk with people, but you're looking at a tremendous amount of money here. Right, I just meant if any of the businesses, I mean, they also will benefit from it. Having a well, they will, but they could donate themselves. Right, whether they, they wanted, wanted to donate. Yeah, they put in some more. Right, and that's what I meant. They put in a couple more. The other thing with fundraising, the bench is donated by us, we have a plaque with our, our exactly. mission on it, which is another way for us to get ourselves out there. Yeah. If somebody donates, they're going to want to have their name as well. That's true. So, yeah. that's, that's right. That's great. That's great. And maybe if you could give a little update, because I told me you were working with Alyssa Klein. We do have a resolution last year that came to City Council, it passed the first reading, and with the second reading there was a little problem with the language on it, so it went back to economic development, housing and land use, back into ordinance, and then came back to us. But the language was changed. I don't have a problem with the language, but anyways, I've the fire at Cybox. Yeah, yeah, and we're working on coming up with a date to have at least one um, public meeting where people can talk about, you know, the, the whole point of this resolution is to sort of state publicly as a city how we feel our downtown sh should be welcoming to all people. And, um, and so, but, you know, everyone has different opinions, and so we would like to have at least one public forum where people can kind of talk about how what they feel that means and um, and help us kind of refine that language. So that would be great. Yeah, so we're working on a, on that would be a date to have a wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Um, one idea that I had um, surrounding this is um, that um, places with one step up, 
which there are numerous ones that um, should have, and I haven't tested this out yet, but I'm thinking that a 20 inch ramp would be adequate for someone like me to get up, and for certainly people who are in push wheelchairs um, could get up. Now, the problem with that is, is it's not the ADA allowable. I mean, the ADA says one inch of rise per one foot. The, the typical nine inch step, you need a nine foot range. That's not going to work today. So, um, the idea, the crazy scheme that I'm coming up with, would be to have this um, 20 inch ramp be available. Um, and one way to make it available would be to have it in a, uh, a lock circumstance, something that requires a key to get into. So the person could get in with the key, use the ramp, and they would then possess the ramp for that period of time mm -hmm. so that you could bypass the ADA requirements because it's their ramp. Mm -hmm. and Do you have examples of what are what maybe other towns and other towns where you have kind of old downtowns where you have these situations where a lot of people No, I actually don't. I mean, I, don't. I, mean, I just wonder. Did, I came up with this idea like last Thursday, mm -hmm. so I really well with the whole uh, yeah, it would be, yeah, yeah, it would be interesting to find out. Maybe uh, you could research it. Yeah, I'm going out. And, um, and we do have our city solicitor who's excellent, especially with all the resolutions and ordinances that we have. He looks at them, and if he feels it's not a go, that there needs to be language oh, yeah, changes, he's right going to do that. No, well, like I say, this is the right, side we're working new. on. We're working on five days here, so. Yeah, but that, that definitely has potential. So, I know, and you should call Jim Marillo at the board or talk to him, Michael. Maybe he could guide you. I know, I know, and you and I talked about this back in was it February. Um, you talked to me about the, the issue you have with these step ups, and um, it would just be interesting. So, so I know that you've been working on this for a while, and obviously it's a big yeah, part of trying to think about how to yeah. do these right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I just wonder, yeah, if there are other towns that have are working on solutions as well. I should think they'd make it mandatory. I think this is something we could bring up at our roundtable too. Uh -huh. so yeah, that's that's like, for doing. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah, I, I am interested to see how this breaks down. Great. Well, we, we have, have our other, other committee meetings out there waiting to come in. Okay, so, thank you so we want to thank you all very much. For thank you so much for having us. This was wonderful. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you.